In this video, we're doing another related rates problem. And with this particular problem, we've been told that water is being pumped from a cylindrical tank, so we're pumping water out of a tank that's in the shape of a cylinder, at five cubic feet per minute. So that's how much water we're removing per minute. How fast is the water level falling when the water is six feet deep? So we've got a bunch of things going on here, and related rates problems can be a little tricky when we're trying to just decipher the question. But what we can say is that the volume of the water is changing, because if we're pumping water out of the tank, then the volume of the water that's inside the tank is going down. We also know that the water level is falling, which makes sense because we're removing water, so the water level should be falling, it should be getting shallower and shallower. So what we can boil this down to is that we have two things that are both changing with respect to time. So as time goes on, the volume of the water is decreasing and the height of the water is decreasing. So with related rates problems, you always have two different values that are changing with respect to a third independent variable. And most often, almost always, that independent variable is time. So you're looking for two things that are both changing with respect to time. And in this case, the water volume is changing and the water height is changing. So what we want is an equation that relates the volume of the water to the height of the water. So we have this cylindrical tank that is holding a certain amount of water. And what we're gonna do is write an equation that relates the volume of the water to the height of the water. So as a reminder, I have here the formula for the volume of a cylinder. So the volume of a cylinder is volume equals pi r squared h, where r is the radius of the cylinder and height is the height of the cylinder. What we need to be careful of is that we are interested in water volume and water height. The water inside of this cylindrical tank is of course going to be in the shape of a cylinder because it's being held inside of this cylindrical tank. So it's going to assume the shape of whatever vessel it's being held in. So the water is going to be in the shape of a cylinder. So we're actually going to use this equation here to relate water volume to water height. We don't really care what the volume of the entire cylinder is or the height of the entire cylinder, we're interested in this cylindrical body of water. So what we want to do is simplify this equation here. So we have volume equals pi r squared h. Well, we've been told from this diagram that the radius of this cylindrical tank is 4. So we want to plug that in for radius right here. So what we'll get is volume equals pi times 4 squared times h. Well, 4 squared is 16, so we can say volume equals 16 pi times h, the height. So now we have volume of the water, height of the water, we've got 16 pi. Since we have an equation that relates volume to height, water volume to water height, and those are the two things that are changing with respect to time, we can now differentiate this equation with respect to time. So that's gonna require us to use implicit differentiation because we're gonna differentiate the variables in this equation with respect to a third variable that doesn't appear in this equation, which means that we're gonna treat each of the variables in this equation as independent variables, which basically just means that we're gonna take the derivatives of these variables as if they were normal independent variables. So what does that mean? Well, it just means normally we're used to seeing an equation like y equals x squared x is the independent variable, we would take the derivative of this equation with respect to x, and if we did, we would get y prime equals 2x. The derivative of y equals x squared would be y prime equals 2x, because x is our independent variable, it's the variable that we're taking the derivative with respect to. So we differentiate this right-hand side, and we say the derivative of x squared is 2x. So that's what we're used to doing. Here, we're going to treat v and h just like we would x. So if we had y equals x, what would the derivative be? Well, the derivative of x we know is one, so we would say y prime is equal to one. Well, the same case here, we just have the single v to the first power, this v variable right here. So its derivative is also gonna be one. So when we take the derivative of v, we're gonna say that the derivative is one. But because we're using implicit differentiation and v is not technically an independent variable like x would be in this case, we have to multiply by dv over dt because we're taking the derivative of volume with respect to time t. So we multiply by dv over dt. 
And the same thing is going to go for h here. So when we want to take the derivative of 16 pi h, what we recognize is that 16 pi is a constant. Pi is a constant, about 3.14. So 16 times pi is going to be about 48 point something. So it's like we have 48h. Well, if we took the derivative of 48x, the derivative would be 48. It's just this constant coefficient that would remain there because the derivative of x is 1, so we would get 48 times 1 or just 48. In other words, that 16 pi is going to hang around. It doesn't go away, so that 16 pi is going to stay. The derivative of h is going to be 1, but because h is not technically an independent variable, now we have to multiply by dh over dt, since we're really taking the derivative with respect to time t and not with respect to h or with respect to v. So in other words, every time we take the derivative of one of these variables, we treat it like we would x, but then we multiply by dv over dt or dh over dt, whatever the variable is, and we use dt in the denominator since we're taking the derivative with respect to time. So now we want to go ahead and simplify this equation. So 1 times dv over dt is still dv over dt. 16 pi times 1 is still 16 pi, so we have 16 pi times dh over dt. Now this dv over dt, what it represents is change in volume with respect to time, or how fast the volume is changing. Same thing here with dh over dt. It represents how fast the height of the water is changing with respect to time. So if we go back to our original problem, we've been told that water is being pumped out of the cylindrical tank at 5 cubic feet per minute. In other words, the water volume is decreasing at 5 cubic feet per minute. So dv over dt, which is how fast is the volume changing over time, we can say that volume is going down at 5 cubic feet per minute. In other words, the change in volume with respect to time would be negative 5 because the volume is decreasing. We have that negative sign. So we can go ahead and plug negative 5 in to this equation for dv over dt. So we say negative 5 equals 16 pi times dh over dt. And now we're in a great position because we've been asked, how fast is the water level falling? In other words, how fast is the height of the water changing? And dh over dt represents how fast the height of the water is changing. So we want to solve for this dh over dt value, which we can do by dividing both sides by 16 pi. So if we divide both sides of this equation, by 16 pi, we can get 16 pi to cancel out here on the right hand side, and we get dh over dt is equal to negative 5 over 16 pi. Now we've been asked to say how fast the water level is falling when the water is 6 feet deep or when the height of the water is 6. But because this is a perfect right cylinder, as long as the volume continues to decrease at a constant rate of negative 5, then the water level is also going to decrease at a constant rate. So it doesn't matter if we're asked to say how fast the water level is decreasing at a depth of 6 feet or 10 feet or 4 feet. It doesn't matter what this value is here. The water level is going to decrease at a constant rate if we change the volume at a constant rate. So we can really ignore this piece of information 6 feet deep and we can just say the height of the water is always changing at a rate of negative 5 over 16 pi.